Hey, how you doing? I'm Joe DiGiulio, and this is DiGiulio Studios. I, as you can see before me, I have a plethora of acrylic mediums, and today we're going to take the mystery out of these acrylic mediums. So let's get started. Basically, I want to break it down to the four aspects of what acrylic mediums are and what they do. But first, you have to understand what is a medium? Well, to simplify it, I would have to say that the acrylic medium is think of it as paint without color. But some of it is thick, some of it's thin, some of it's opaque or transparent. So we're going to go through and try to take the mystery out of what we're doing today with acrylic medium. So to start with, we're going to talk about the four basic parts. The sheen, whether it's matte, which is flat, or whether it's going to be gloss, shiny. Secondly, you could mix them together if you wanted and create actually a satin kind of finish or an extender to the paint color. Uh, the second thing is opacity. And what I mean by opacity is when you paint over another color, can you see through that color underneath or does it cover it up? Is it transparent to be able to see through or is it opaque? So we've got sheen, we've got opacity. Next thing is viscosity. Viscosity basically is the thinness or the thickness of the paint. Do I want to thicken the paint up so that I can apply it with perhaps a palette knife or make it flow better with a brush so that way I would actually change the viscosity to be more fluid. And finally, drying time. Speeding up drying time or slowing down drying time. When would you want to slow down a drying time? Oh, a great time to do that would be like I'm outside in the summertime and I'm trying to do some plein air painting but with acrylics and they dry through evaporation. So what we want to do is we want to slow that evaporation process down and there's products to do that. So again, our four basic product, our four basic properties are sheen, opacity, viscosity, and drying time. So let's start with the first one, sheen. Is it going to be transparent, uh, excuse me, is it going to be gloss or is it going to be matte? And what I've got, I've got a few different uh, mediums that we have and it can get quite uh, overwhelming, but the fact is there's all these different companies, there's Golden, Liquitex, Windsor Newton, Matisse, all of them, produce high quality mediums, but basically they will make them either gloss or matte as far as adding it to color. So today I've got a little bit of transparent color so I can show you. And to start with, let me just take a little bit out, apply it right on to the palette paper. Now, this is a gloss medium varnish. When they say medium varnish, a varnish is a top coat. A medium is actually something that you mix into the paint to extend, to extend the paint body. So let's do that first. Um, by applying a little gloss to the color, I can blend it around. And what it's going to do with any of these and Liquid Texas uses the F on there to let you know that it is a fluid medium. It is a medium that's going to flow as opposed to a thickening medium. All right, uh, with that being said, uh, and I primarily use quite a bit of Liquid Tex, but Golden, Matisse, or Windsor Newton, all top quality. So how do I pick which one should I use? Well, uh, to me, because the quality is pretty much the same, I got to see what's on sale. What's on sale at the store? That's what I'll get. And there's nothing that says I can't use a Matisse medium along with a Golden or a Liquitex medium, blending them all together. They all will work together. They'll still adhere together very well. But what I want you to see is when I added that medium to it, I could apply it right onto the canvas and you see, it still is transparent, but when this dries, it'll be very glossy. I can take the same paint, 
circle it out a little bit more. Let's find some matte medium. And um, you'll see Jerry's Autorama, they make a studio medium and varnish. And you'll see they use the words medium and varnish quite a bit. And, and that's just to let you know that product can be used for both uh, the, the extension of paint, but also as a top coat. And one of the things when we get to top coating is uh, what I have here, this is what I call the recipe. I don't really like the, the uh, varnishes or the mediums or the sheen that we're really talking about, our first aspect, to be too shiny, too glossy. I don't like that. It's, it kind of rebounds when I try to ph photograph it. And I don't like it to be matte or chalky. So what I do is I take a little bit of matte medium and a bit of gloss medium and I mix them together half and half. By mixing them together half and half, now my sheen is not so bright and it's not flat and chalky. It's somewhere in the middle. It's what I call the recipe. I use it for an isolation coat and I will tell you what that is a little bit later on. But more importantly, I get a satin finished. It is like got a little soft glossiness to it, but not so much that it's bright and repelling light back in your face that you really can't absorb the painting. All right. You can see I've done that right there. Now let's take and put a little um, matte medium in with the paint. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see the matte medium and the gloss medium i want to put them side by side because the matte medium you can see is a little bit more chalky or milky whereas you have a little bit more translucent property with the gloss medium okay so i'll take a little bit of this and i just want to put that on there and we're going to have to let that dry a little bit but I just want you to see how the finish looks once it dries. Okay, so let's just set that off to the side. Get that in the water. So I have my recipe, which is a mixture of gloss and matte medium together. So that is basically the sheen. What is it? I can adjust it. If it's too much, like I make my... Uh, uh, recipe together and it's too still a little bit too glossy I'll just add a little matte medium in there I try to make it half and half but you can adjust the sheen to be more flat or to be more glossy depending on the levels or percentages of the gloss or matte that you put into it and that will adjust the sheen so let's say as a varnish We've already talked about it as a medium. As a varnish, if I'm putting uh, some paint down and finishing my artwork, and say uh, one color dries and it dries a little bit chalky, and this other one dries really bright, anything that's like a quinacridone uh, is a great example of a color that has a little bit more sheen than most of other colors or, that are in the uh, color line. So what I can do at the end is I can put my recipe on there and it'll homogenize the sheen. So if I got something chalky over here, something that's a little bit too glossy over here, I can put this on as a finishing varnish and top coat that actually seals the painting, protects it from outside pollutants, thus the word isolation coat, but it also will homogenize the sheen so that everything will have a nice even tone. So if you're using maybe a uh, high quality paints and you maybe in the background you're using more of a studio quality or lesser quality paint you can have it that will dry a little bit flatter you can have it all be one nice even tone okay so that is sheen the next thing i want to talk about is opacity when i talk about opacity we have to introduce the word gel and right here I have a, um, well, this is a molding paste, which is the other one, and there's a gel. Okay. When we talk about opacity, we're talking about the ability to be able to see through the paint transparent or for the paint to be able to cover an opaque paint. 
So with these products here, whether it's a Golden or a Liquitex, uh, they will do uh, basically the same thing. Gel mediums will make paint translucent or transparent. How do I remember that? An easy way I always did was jello, gel, jello. That word gel is a key word to letting you know that it's transparent. If it's going to be opaque, usually the word associated with that as a great rule of thumb is paste or pasto. You'll see uh, from the Latin term pasto. Uh, Matisse uh, makes it a has a gel medium, but they also have, where is the other one? Here it is, the impasto medium. Now here is the trick that will kind of help you with the mystery. Paints are either going to be transparent or opaque, depending on what medium you add to them. Whether it's Matisse impasto medium, whether it's Liquitex's molding paste, or whether it's Golden's modeling paste, they are all opaque thickeners. They make the paint opaque and they thicken the body of the paint. Why do they have different names? Well, one reason I always thought is that when the instructor says, go get Liquitex's modeling paste or go get Golden's molding paste, they use proprietary names for something that will be exactly the same whether it's Matisse or Liquitex or Golden. So that's the one thing to remember. If it is any word pasto or paste in it, it's going to be an opacitator. Ooh, is that a real word? Opaque. That is what it's going to do. So let's, let's take, for example, uh, regular gel that's matte by Golden. What it is, it is a gel, transparent, and it will also has defined the sheen as matte. So what we talked about earlier with the, the sheen, whether it's being matte or gloss, the uh, gel medium will be determined because they'll sell a product that is a regular gel matte medium or there's a regular gel gloss. I don't know if I've got that. I think there's one here. Yes, this is the gel medium gloss. So basically that's taken into account. It's a product that will use either one of what we just talked about, sheen or opacity. Okay, so let's get to it. Quit talking about it. Seeing is a little bit better. You see it's a real thick. It is a thickener. It will hold its shape. Unlike a fluid medium, that when you put it down, it self-levels. This will actually allow you to create different textures in the paint. So when I mix it together with a color, this is a transparent color, as you can see, going right through the black sea and through it. Now let me introduce a little color to it. And this is the impasto medium, the thickener. Now here's the thing you'll need to know. If you're using a studio grade, paint is like a student grade, a studio grade, and a fine artist grade. A good, better, best. What, what's the difference between one or the other? The best, or the fine artist grade, that paint has a lot of pigment in it. Pigment is the actual color maker of the paint. And because it is bombarded with so much more pigment, it's going to allow you to use these mediums to extend the paint with, and make a big, larger pile of paint without shifting the color tone. Sometimes if you take a cheaper paint and add a medium to it, that medium will pastel out that color once it dries. So that's important to, that if you learn to command your mediums, you'll actually be able to, uh, in my opinion, by commanding your mediums, you will actually be able to be a little bit more economic in the cost of your paint because the mediums will cost less than the paint out of the tube. So if I can use a medium properly, extend high quality paint, I'm going to get a high quality paint that has a large amount of it because I properly introduced the gel, the, not excuse me, not gel, but the mediums to it. But you can see there, 
Now that transparent paint is now opaque, okay? So that is the beauty of an impasto medium. Let's do another one of the same thing. All right, we have modeling paste. That's what Liquitex calls theirs. Let's just take another one here. Can you tell the difference now which one there is Liquitex, which one is Matisse? I can't. That is what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. It looks pretty much the same. So this is the Liquitex, I mean the Matisse is in pastel medium, and we are taking some more color because I want to use a true color again. And you see that's the way it is once you add the impasto medium to it. And then no medium. Let's just take a little bit of that. I got a little bit too much water in here and I have misplaced my paper towels. A little bit too much water in there. But this has, you can still see, you can still see, that's why I'm pushing hard. Now, if that was on a white canvas, you'd have a nice glazed tone, but that's why I put the black canvas today so you could see the difference. Transparent can see through, opaque cannot. Sheen, gloss, matte. Opacity, thick or thin, opaque or transparent. Next thing is viscosity. We kind of touched on that a little bit. When we talk about viscosity is I want to thicken the paint. Well, that is what molding paste in an opaque fashion or a gel in a transparent fashion will do. So let's take a little bit of gel to show you. You'll see the gel medium. Let's see if I can get a better tool. Yeah. That's what your apron's for, just wiping it off. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to see how it's a little bit more translucent See, the, oh, the, the molding paste is going to be opaque, whereas the gels are going to be transparent. So there is your difference of how it's going to change the characteristics of the paint, whether it's going to be opaque or it's going to be transparent. Uh, next thing, moving on. Uh, with the viscosity, we talked about all these different kinds of mediums. I could thin it with water, the paint, fine. You can, but if you get over 20% water compared to what you're using as far as paint, it kills the adhesion property of the, water, of the paint onto the canvas. It won't grip and hold. So uh, that's why you want to be able to thin it down by using uh, fluid mediums such as these. You'll see, well, how do I know what's fluid or not? If it shakes around like that, it's going to be fluid compared to a paste or a gel. Paste and gels are the opaque or transparent thickeners, and gloss mediums or matte mediums or satin varnishes, they will thin the paint out. But not only will they thin the paint out, they will adjust the sheen. Again, sheen, opaque, satin, excuse me, sheen is gloss, satin, or matte. So we'll be able to adjust that to whatever kind of sheen we want. We can make it thick or thin. We can make it be able to see through, would be an opaque or non-opaque, or transparent is another word. So I don't know if I've confused you more than I have uh, explained it. 
the main thing is that don't get overwhelmed by all the different names when you go and shop for the product. If there's paste or pasto in it, that's going to be fine as a thickener. That's what paste does. Like matte uh, gel, it is going to be a thickener. The gel is going to indicate to us it's going to be transparent. And that indicates to us that it's going to be flat. So it's going to be a flat, transparent thickener, okay? Molding paste. Molding paste is going to be a thickener, again, paste, okay? Uh, because it is a paste, it is going to be opaque. And molding paste always dries uh, in a matte format. It's ne I've never seen molding paste uh, be glossy. So generally, it's going to get that flat chalkiness. So again, that's what we talked about earlier about when I apply the paint, some, some of it's going to be opaque, some of it's going to be transparent. Transparents tend to have a more of sheen than the opaque paint. Uh, so you'll have these different degrees of sheens uh, on the piece, and I want to homogenize that. So that is why I use... When my painting's finished, three coats of this, which I call the, uh, let me put this away for a second. Three coats of the recipe, which is half matte and half gloss. They're mediums, but they're fluid ones. They're not thickeners. Now I'm shaking this. I shouldn't be doing that really. Uh, that is, uh, probably it should usually be stirred. So I, this is a painting, just a little quick study I did bef before I came here. And it's not finished. So I wanted to take some of that, that medium, which we call uh, the uh, recipe. And what I'm doing today is I'm just applying a coat of it. I'm going to go horizontally and vertically. Is this the right way or the wrong way? I don't know. It's my way. This is the way I do it. I do in one direction. And you see it's not totally milky in nature or flat and it's not totally translucent gloss. It's in between because I've used half gloss and half matte. Now when it comes out it's going to look like a uh, cloudy and milky. I go horizontally, then vertically. Don't freak out about that. It will dry absolutely 100% clear. Okay, I like it to be a horizontal, vertical. Once I do that, I might apply a little bit more. I'm going to do this three times. This is the mix, okay? Up and down, back and forth. That way it gets in all the crevices inside there. Okay. Now the final thing I want to do is I'm going to take and go along with the brush strokes in the painting. And I kind of go with the brush strokes. It's sort of like going with the grain of the wood. And you'll see it has a bit of a sheen right now. Let it dry, set it off to the side for about 15 minutes, and it'll come back and have a nice tone, but it won't be so glaring and bright. And that's the key to that. Okay, now... So that's what a fluid is going to do. It's going to either uh, make, you can make it matte with a matte medium, or you can take and use gloss, or Golden calls it polymer medium gloss. All of these are, we're talking again about viscosity. They're fluid. I like Liquitex because they make a no-brainer out of it. It's got an F on it for fluid, okay? If you want uh, something to create some special effect, it has an effect on it. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, if it's going to be a some kind of extending medium, it's got the G for gels on there. So they kind of make it very simple. I guess that's probably why I, I use them. But uh, I will, when it comes to picking what it should be, I will always pick the one that costs the least amount. What's on sale? That's what I'm always going to do. But I want it to be a good quality one as well. Okay. Now I let that sit aside. And that's what I call an isolation coat. So uh, that while that sits and dries, I might have two or three or four more. Well, I have another one, so let's do it. This is not finished. It's just a bunch. What I did is I wanted to use uh, a variance of colors. And I also included an acrylic gouache, this ultramarine blue is not really a typical acrylic paint. It's a gouache, which is an opaque watercolor, but it, the acrylic gouache is an opaque watercolor that will not re-wet. And what that does, it gives you the effects of an acrylic paint, but it is really bright, intense color, but it is super flat. Everything will be super flat. You'll see, I don't know if you can see, these blues in here are flat, Whereas I have maybe somewhat a little more sheen here with um, the Australian Sienna. So with that being said, I would again uh, want to uh, speed up or like we're talking about the fourth and final one is drying time. Speeding up uh, or slowing down drying time. We did mention earlier with slowing down drying time, there's a thing called a drying retarder. Golden uses the word retarder. Uh, Liquitex uses the word slow dry fluid. They are all the same thing. You add some of them to the paint and it extends the drying time of the paint. In fact, companies like Golden went so far to make the entire line of paint, a separate line of paint that had the retarder already in it. That is what you've heard of as Golden's open uh, line of paint. When it says open on the tube, that means it has retarder already introduced to it. And it lets someone actually that wants to paint maybe, uh, I don't know, portraiture or something like that. It makes it so that it extends the drying time so you can work on it and work wet on wet. The paint film doesn't dry as quick as what it normally would if it was a regular acrylic that will dry in, you know, 15 minutes to a half hour. So it extends the drying time. So that is what we could do. Now, I'm going to speed up the drying time. Well, the one way to speed up the drying time is to use a blow dryer to uh, blow dry the surface. But when you blow dry, that will actually speed up and kind of is not that great for the adhesion properties, chemically speaking. Uh, so the way to do that is to dry from underneath the canvas. We might have spoke about that in an earlier video. But the secret is, if I blow dry the top of the canvas when it's still wet, it will skin the top. Skinning is drying the top, yet the paint underneath will still be wet. So I want to get rid of that issue because when you apply heat, as we would with a blow dryer, the water that is part of the acrylic body is going to run away from the heat. So if I blow dry from underneath, it will make the water come to the top surface then I can blow dry it off the top surface. And chemically speaking, going to give a much quicker, much better bond than skinning by just drying from the top. So I pull the canvas right to the edge of the table. I don't know if this is uh, in the shot or not, but it blow it in the, in the edge of the canvas and it billows up and lets this dry completely underneath the back side of the canvas. So that will allow that to dry evenly top and bottom. So I can speed up uh, with the blow dryer or I can slow down using retarder or slow dry medium. So that's basically your four mediums. Sheen, opacity, viscosity, and drying time. So just to sum it up from the end, sheen. Is it going to be matte and flat or is it going to be glossy and shiny? Opacity. Is it going to be transparent with a gel? Or is it going to be opaque with a paste? Paste and gels. Transparent thickener, opaque thickener. 
then we have viscosity, thin or thick, adding water or adding a fluid, acrylic medium, whether I want to change it to a gloss or a matte, you, they have all the products for doing that. And finally, drying time, which is introducing a drying retarder or the blow dryer, whether you want to slow down the drying time or speed up the drying time. So hopefully I've kind of covered everything. There's those four basic uh, elements there. There's sheen, opacity, viscosity, and drying time. Just remember all the different names that a product might have from a particular company are somewhat proprietary. Whether it's an impasto medium, or it's by Matisse, or it's a molding paste by a, a golden or a, a modeling paste by Liquitex, they are all the same thing. So next time that you're shopping in your regular art supply store, just keep in mind, what is it that you want to achieve? Do you want to make it thick? Do you want to make it thin? Ask your sales associate. They can help you with that. So just, uh, just to kind of make it easy and finish up. Uh, again, uh, finally, I'm Joe DiGiulio with DiGiulio Studios. Uh, hopefully, I've taken some of the mystery out of acrylic mediums with you today. If not, self-explore, try the different ones yourself, and from that, you'll get your own library of experience. So I'm Joe DiGiulio, DiGiulio Studios. I'll see you next time.